Hello team, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video where we'll be discussing Britain must be ready to fight a war within the next three years. This has come from the new head of the army, that is General Sir Roland Walker. General Sir Roland Walker is a new Chief of General Staff and professional head of the British Army as of the 15th of June 2024, okay? And he's got some credit behind him. Joining back in 1990, he served in the Guards Division, the Household Division, firstly in the Irish Guards, uh, and then actually moving on to 22 Special Air Service, okay, the SAS. He then was commander of the Grenadier Guards and then becoming director of Special Forces and later on in his career serving multiple and multiple of tours. He's got a hell of a lot of experience underneath him and he knows what he is going on about. Hence, while he is Chief of General Staff. He has come out and said that he is warning against a range of threats in what he called an increasingly volatile world. And this has come quite apparent uh, recently. A lot of, you know, Chief of General Staff, previous Chief of General Staff um, are coming out and saying that we are now in a pre-war generation. And I know the younger generation don't like to hear it, but we are possibly in a pre-war generation, okay? This means we're no longer in that drawing war. We're not in Iraq. We're not in Afghan. We're not in that post-war um, where sort of Afghan died off. We're now pre-war. They're pretty much saying something is going to kick off with the way the world is. Ukraine and Russia going on, Israel, Gaza, You've got other stuff going on in the Middle East all the time. Uh, and you've also got China increasingly um, increasing their threat on Taiwan. They want to take Taiwan. And I think it's an, only a matter of time before that actually happens. And what he's saying is we are not actually readily capable of defending ourselves or being a deterrent for war. So sometimes it works and it's a good way. Why? Like, look at America. America's massive, huge amount of personnel in the millions. They've got some proper high-tech equipment. No money is spare. They spend approximately 800 billion on their armed forces each year. No one really is going to just go out and attack America. We know it's pretty pretty unlikely that's going to happen. But the way the British Army's gone with cutting back on numbers, cutting back on funding, kit and equipment, um, not readily available, we're not deterring ourselves from possibly entering some form of conflict. He's saying, so it's only sort of a matter of time that something does kick off. Uh, and we sort of need to hopefully either avoid that or be ready for it. He hasn't specifically mentioned numbers, even though we know a lot of us that numbers are too low. We're just over 72,000, uh, around 75,000, uh, and the target's to be 72,500 by 2025. We don't have the numbers coming in through recruitment, and we don't keep the numbers through retention. I've obviously spoken in a previous video about conscription, but what he's actually saying is just modernising the army to be ready. Uh, he wants to be able to attack and defeat an army three times the size of the British army. So we need faster equipment, we need equipment that can fire further, and most probably some form of very good artificial intelligence. So I know what they're looking at is now sending things by data instead of sort of you know, by communications by radio. So data more secure and it can be faster and more accurate because obviously what you're sending, you'll be able to see on the screen. We've got the Ajax coming in, but is it going to be ready in time? They're still doing their trials. The amount of issues they've had, I think they're on like drop two or three now and there's five drops until it's pretty much fully operational. You've got the AS90, he's pretty much just been given away. We no longer have that. We've currently got the Archer as an interim 155 while we wait for the RCH 155. Um, so that needs to get come in. The Chally 3 is slowly, progressively coming in, but the Challenger 2 is pretty old now. So that's pretty outdated. Um, we're still working off the SA-80, A2 and A3 for pretty much majority of soldiers. It's only really part on the Marines and the Ranger Battalions who have the new AR-15. So weapon systems aren't up to date. So we're not ready. So he wants to hopefully increase funding, which apparently the new Labour government is saying they are going to increase it, increase it. I think it's around 2.35 at the minute and they want to increase to 2.5% of GDP. So it's a slight increase. So we need to get more and more equipment in to hopefully either deter 
some sort of conflict or at least be able to defend ourselves because right now what they're saying is we're not capable of being able to defend ourselves um i think we need to increase numbers i think conscription may have to be one of them if recruitment and retention is still going to remain very very low uh, and we need to get the ajax finished and in the ajax variants the whole family we need to get the rch155 in uh the archers only an interim and we need to get the Chally free in and we need to look at replacing the SAAT for all infantry soldiers and even pretty much most close combat soldiers. So that's recce sort of engineers. Um, you've got majority of uh, artillery, sort of your fire support teams. You've got your sort of armoured division guys, armoured recce, household cavalry, etc. Um, you know, and there's a few other units as well that could do with upgrading their weapon system. So there is a lot of work to be done um to hopefully deter this but he is pretty adamant that pff, we need to be ready to fight within the next three years russia with what's going on with ukraine could be weakened but they might want to retaliate after everyone has sort of helped ukraine given aid weapon systems and munitions like i said china and taiwan is pretty inevitable it's more than likely going to happen very very soon and then obviously you've got the middle east all that sort of stuff going on as well so that's where we're currently at this is the new um Chief of General Staff of the British Army, the professional head of the British Army, has come out and said this. And um, we're seeing a lot of, you know, current generals, former generals come and saying, us as a military, us as a British Army are not ready. We, we are not ready to fight. Uh, and it's quite worrying. There's a lot of heads sort of saying that and the government aren't really listening. So hopefully something will get done soon, especially with the new Labour Party being in. Fingers crossed something gets done about it. Um, but that's sort of a latest update of what's going on on that on previous sort of subjects we've done recently on this channel. As always, if you could please comment below with what your thoughts are on this. What do you think? Is he right? Is he correct? What's your? How could we fix this? Uh, and go and check out some of our merch and our coffee blends over on our website. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Introducing today's sponsors, DYU Cycle. In the hustle and bustle of city life, finding the perfect balance between convenience and sustainability can be a challenge. But fear not, because DYU Cycles is here to revolutionise your urban commutes and urban adventures. Introducing the DYU C1, the Optimine of Urban Mobility. With its sleek design and cutting edge features, the C1 is not just a bike, but a lifestyle choice. From its 26 inch wheels, seven gears, disc brakes, front torque, shock absorbers, and a vibrant display, it is crafted with precision engineering. The DYU C1 boasts a robust build that can handle the rigorous city's streets with ease, and the urban trails. From its responsive disc brakes, smooth gear transitions, every aspect of the C1 is designed to elevate your riding experience. Don't let its urban prowess fool you. The DYU C1 is equally at home and great in the outdoors. Whether you're exploring the rugged trails or cruising through scenic countryside, the C1's versatility knows no bounds. Let's talk about power with three distinct riding modes. You've got efficient, you've got default, and you've got sport. The C1 adapts to your needs. With maximum range for a daily commute, then choose efficient. Craving for that adrenaline fueled adventure? Switch to sport mode for an exhilarating ride. Here's the best part though. Charging is a breeze. With the DYU C1, simply plug in and power up. With no hassle of removing the battery, it's convenience redefined. So whether you're sipping through the city streets or exploring the hidden trails, make every an adventure with DYU Cycles. Join the movements to sustainable transportation and embrace the freedom of electric biking. Power your ride with DYU Cycles, where innovation meets adventure. Experience the future of urban mobility with DYU Cycles. Check them out in the link below really support the channel they provide high quality bikes i appreciate every link and purchase if you have any questions then don't hesitate to send me an email or contact me on instagram once again thank you to today's sponsor dyu cycles